Hi everyone, uh, my name is Erica Burns. This is my YouTube channel and today I would like to have story a time about my emotional transition uh, from male to female or my, my just my transition journey. Um, so yeah, this is just something that has definitely been on my mind lately. This whole year actually is really, you know, while it's been COVID, I've really um, had more time than ever to really focus on myself and my transgender identity and who I am as a woman and, and how I, you know, want to feel, you know, um, or how I feel on the inside and how I want that to be reflected on the outside. Because I think for a really long time, I was expected to suppress how I feel on the inside and, and not be able to project that outward. And so as a result, I kind of settled for this, you know, half good self of, uh, uh, half good self, like, you know, um, you know, I, I went as androgynous in middle school, high school and college and everything. And basically not middle school, but in, in high school and college uh, until I, you know, came out, but my hair was already long. But then when it did come out in college, you know, I just went by a new name. And so, yeah, I didn't really, um, you know, get to experience, you know, a whole lot of, a whole lot of good in terms of just being able to feel free to be who I was and feel safe to do so. Uh, and I think, you know, um, part of it was just like not giving myself the permission, you know, even in some, in some cases, I suppose. Um, but at the same time, there was also the element of not feeling safe or worrying what kind of reactions anybody would have. Um, you know, I did try to tell my mom once and she reacted horrifiedly. She was horrified. And, um, that was actually when I was 14. So, um, yeah, when I was 14, I came out to my mom. I told her I wanted to be a girl. And she reacted like, oh my God, this is worse than I when I lost my brother. Uh, what does this mean you're gay? Like, what is your grandma gonna say? Um, like, just basically like, you know, um, and then, you know, I tried to put me in. So I, I don't know if it was conversion therapy based specifically. I don't wanna say it because it's so intense. But I mean, <laughs> If it's a, if you consider a therapist who would try to help me be a boy again, a conversion therapist, then by all means conversion therapy. But like any therapy, I never went, um, and no one ever made me until I was fifteen. I chose to go to one, but basically all the therapists none of it been by force. Uh, well, a few were, but my mom lied to me about what they were. So, uh, and then they didn't pan out, and I guess there just wasn't a level of persistence on my mom's part, which is fine. I'm not blaming my mom for everything. I'm just saying like she didn't know what to do either. She was a mom, you know, it wasn't you know, expecting to have a transgender child to take care of. So anyway, the point I'm making is that, you know, I was ready to transition when I'm supposed to transition, you know, maybe even sooner or, or, or later. I already suffered a lot. Let's be honest. I already suffered a lot before 14. So I was ready to transition probably at like 12 or 11 or 12, maybe, maybe even sooner. But I would definitely say once puberty hit, because that's when things officially started going downhill for me in, at 12 in middle school. But anyway, yeah, just, just basically, um, yeah, college, it was like, okay, it's okay to come out now. And I'm like, oh, well, that's just the typical standard of society and everything and this whole school system and just how fucked up it all is because I knew how much I'd suffered not feeling safe to come out in high school, not having any representation for me to come out. And maybe, I don't know, there could have been support there and I could have really bulldozed away like Gwen Araujo did in her high school, but I had just watched the Guanarajo movie on Lifetime before I'd started high school and was like, well, fuck, I don't want that to happen to me entirely, but I super inspired by her and really just would love to see her at my school. Of course, she was dead by then. Um, but yes, basically just, just like, you know, um, a lot of suppression and, and, and then just developing this tough facade exterior when I didn't even really need it, honestly. Like once I got to college, I didn't need it. So I realized now in trying to like say, well, fuck society for not letting me come out and high school, I'm going to raise a stink, you know, uh, yeah, maybe there was totally that to do, but I also was, you know, drinking at the time and I started dr developing a drinking habit and just, you know, self-sabotage. I didn't give myself the permission to be myself in some senses because I was like, well, there's got to be this fight I got to fight, you know, and, you know, still full of testosterone because I wasn't taking hormones at the time. I'm sure I looked really intense to some people at school. And I totally understand that. And they were trying to be supportive of me. But I mean, uh, yeah. Anyway, I still look like a guy for all intents and purposes. Or hell of enough of one. But yeah, this is actually, speaking of which, this is a picture of me um, 
when I um, was 22, right before I started um, HRT, hormone replacement therapy. Again, wish it was much sooner, but yeah. So I just, but I realized that I was like depriving Erica of being herself, like of giving her the chance to really be herself and prioritize that because wasn't that such a crucial thing for me at 14? But then I think I just started to minimize my lived experiences as I went on because I felt the pressure of life in general. And, and so what I was going through didn't matter enough. And, and here I was trying to like really make a difference and say, well, you know, we need to fuck this system as a whole and I'll come out when the time is right. But I was obviously not in touch with the reality of the situation and I wasn't serving myself well. So now I've been forced to face my demons. Um, after college, I, I did start HRT, hormone replacement therapy, and um, moved out to LA. And my main focus, probably more than my transition at this point, was my career. And, and basically, I think what I was doing was while I was trying to fight the system, ultimately I was going along with the cisgender trajectory. You go to school, get good grades, go to college, get a degree. Or in my case, I was like, well, I'm gonna pursue acting, so what does a degree matter? And let me go out to LA. And of course, that whole time I, I was missing out on um, like the developments, uh, besides Laverne Cox, a lot of developments in, you know, um, transgender exposure in the media, which is what I was pursuing. When I, so what before I was, and I, so yeah, and that's another thing alcohol can do. You can, you know, just get drunk and, you know, just cope that way instead of handling what needs to be handled, which is what I should have done. Yeah. But we, we say shoulda, coulda, woulda, and maybe things happen for a reason, and maybe part of my purpose on this earth, at least now, is to, you know, make an example of myself or use my experiences and what happened for me as a way to basically, you know, prevent this from happening in the future. But I do have to let go. I definitely have to let go. That's been a huge theme for me this year, is to let go of things, because the truth is I am holding on to so much from the past. And was it fair? No. And, and was it right? Absolutely not. Um, but you know what? I wasn't taking care of myself. I was granted, I was mentally ill. I was under teens, my teens, of course, but nevertheless. So my transition story has been quite interesting because yeah, I would basically say, you know, I mean, I knew I wanted to transition as soon as I knew about being transgender pretty much at 12. And then 14, I came out to my mom officially when she already had a sense of what was going on. I, I, I will absolutely admit that. I mean, my parents did. Like I was, and I'm backtracking a little here, but I was putting on makeup in my mom's, um, in her uh, bathroom when I was like 11. And like they caught on to it and locked their door so I couldn't get in there and stuff. But yeah, it just it just basically has been a ri a wild ride, but I have to also realize that like, you know, I have to live. And I think that's another thing I've just basically been afraid of doing too. It's not just transitioning now, but living because I was growing up in a world that didn't welcome me, a world that didn't um accept me. And so now I have to be back out there in the world. I mean, I don't know with COVID, maybe not, but you know, to some extent, be back out there in the world at some point, like I'm doing right now with this YouTube video, and you know, just just um, be able to like live life and move forward, because I was so scared of doing that when I was younger. I was just terrified and paralyzed by everything, and 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 developed roadblocks in my head. So it's just a matter of realizing that things have changed. My parents are different now. The world as a whole is different now, and so I can take those roadblocks down. Yeah, is it not fair that I had to go through what I had to go through again in high school? Yeah. In, in middle school even? Yeah. In college? Yeah. You know? But for myself, I need to let go of that and realize that stuff was never supposed to happen in the first place. So why live my life by it? My life is supposed to be so much more than that. It is supposed to be so much more than that. So this is the point where I came out once, I came out again, and now I'm coming out again. And this time I have a plan for myself. Thank you. This isn't a speech, but thank you. <laughs>